Hey folks, this is Bardic Dragoon. Welcome to another episode of Let's Play Gargoyles Quest. So when we last left off, we'd arrived here in Jarktown, that's the name of this town by the way. Picked up some items, uh, well, by items I mean bought a tal- or bought a talisman of the cyclone and showed up the saving mechanics. After traveling through a dimensional portal from a one-room dimension, apparently, to the Ghoul Realm. So now that we're in Jarktown, well, we should find out why we're here in Jarktown. After picking up some vials, people just left lying around for some reason. And the reason we're in Jarktown is to talk to this guy, Jark, appropriately the leader, or mayor, or whatever you want to call it of this town. He is Jark, and he is afraid he cannot help us. Not that we asked him to, but hey, whatever. But he cannot help us without his gremlin stick. Yes, he is powerless without his ability to place his his hands upon his mighty gremlin stick. And I'm sure if I wanted to put thought into a joke like that, I could go even further, but whatever. Point is, his powers are very limited, and if only he had it back. Not that he was asking us to retrieve it, but the game acts like it was, because, you know, it's one of those... It's a Game Boy game from the 90s. The translation is as much as you would figure it would be. So yes, we will go retrieve the gremlin stick you, at, you didn't actually ask us to go find. And for agreeing to retrieve his gremlin stick, he gives us the fingernail of the specter. Which we really wouldn't even be able to proceed in the game without that. Because that allows us to uh, become lighter and fly higher. Uh, essentially meaning that the stats have now increased. We now have a level 2 jump. So, yay, we can jump higher. Which is important. Because this next area... The River of Flame, I think it's called. Yeah, I see. We can barely jump high enough to get up there. If we didn't have the fingernail of the specter, we could not proceed. So yeah. Even if we didn't want to receive the guy or retrieve the guy's stick, we wouldn't have been able to get to the rest of the world map without his uh, fingernail of the specter that he gave us. And so now we must traverse a lake of fire by gliding over it. You know, there's a bridge on the map graphics. Whoever made that bridge is terrible at making bridges. I should just point that out. Anyway. Now we're on the other side of the bridge. Or we should really quickly make a detour. Well, not really much of a detour. It's actually more or less on our way. To pick up a talisman of the cyclone. And then shuffle our feet along. Because it was too hard to animate feet coming off the ground, I guess, back in the uh, 90s. Yeah. Getting that one a little close. And now I have to wait for those bullets to despawn. So what we do... There, I just thought they had to despawn from the stage, not actually just leave the screen. Hmm. Nope, shows I don't know everything I thought I did about this game. Whatever. On to the third stage, and the real meat of today's episode. The uh, next big level of the game after the dimension portal we traversed yesterday. The big tower monster. And no, that is, I didn't mess that up. It is not the big monster tower. But I suppose that would be a viable name as well, uh, being that it's a big tower filled with monsters. Well, mostly ghouls, flies, and exploding tree mushroom things, whatever those are. I'm not sure how many of those are monsters, per se. I guess ghouls qualify as monsters. Though, compared to some of the other monsters that we face, or enemies we face this later on in the game, I'm not sure they would count as monsters, but hey. Anyway. But, when we get to the boss fight, you'll see why it's instead the big tower monster. But, for the time being, we'll go through some, uh, very methodical platforming as we climb our way up this tower. Grabbing a few vials along the way, of course, because vials are useful. Sort of. I mean, it's one of those things you get with uh, old games where, you know, extra lives are really only as useful as you are bad at the game. By the way, interesting uh, side note, uh, if you go down there, there's actually an extra life you can grab, as well as, of course, the vial you saw, but I don't really feel the need to do that, and I've tended to uh, have issues where if I do that jump, because uh, it takes you back down to, you saw when we were climbing up that first vertical area, there was an offshoot, there was a slant go slant going, or a ramp going up, 
And yeah, that ramp leads to uh, some thwomp things and then eventually a dead end. Though if you come at it, so that dead end is where you fall if you go down. But yeah, going down that ramp and dealing with those thwomps there. Or actually, I don't think they're actually thwomps. I think just like eye blocks or evil eyes or something stupid like that. But I've always called them thwomps, so that's what I'll continue to call them. Anyway, it's a bit hard, and I have a tendency to get myself killed trying to get that extra life, so it's just become one of those things I just don't even try. Okay, yeah, what we're looking for is going to be... Okay, climb there. Climb there. Climb. There. Why? And... Up this last vertical segment to the boss of this stage. And the reason it's called the Big Tower Monster. We've actually been inside a monster this whole time. And so now to defeat it we have to blow up its eyes. Which it has four of them that are in the inside of its body. I don't know why it has eyeballs on the inside of its body. At least I assume they're eyeballs. They look kind of like eyeballs. I they look like giant pus filled warts or something. I don't know. Point is we have to destroy them. And each one takes five hits with, well, I would say this weapon, but this is the only weapon you can actually go into this stage with. And seizureific! And with that seizureific victory, we have found Jark's stick. Or, no, we go through the door. And then by walking through that door, we somehow more accurately find the gremlin stick. An incredible force is building in your body. You have the power of the blockbuster. So now we have the ability to make people line up around the block for. Actually, yeah, that hasn't even been relevant to how that what blockbuster actually means since uh, yeah, I didn't even know where I was going with that joke. Whatever. Okay. Oh, I suppose I should equip our new weapon. Not that it matters against enemies like these, but the blockbuster. Which, other than looking kind of like a boomerang, allows us to destroy blocks, and does more damage. I think it actually does two points of damage compared to the one point of damage that the default breath weapon, whatever that was called, that we had is. So it still takes two hits to kill those things, so maybe it's like 1.5 to the one point of the... I don't know. I don't actually know. I just know it's more powerful. Can we proceed forward or do we have to go talk to Jark first? Okay, I have to go talk to Jark first. Okay. In that case, we'll go talk to Jark, return to the gremlin stick that gave us this magnificent power to shoot boomerangs from our mouth. Which is far more impressive than it sounds. I mean, have you ever tried to shoot a boomerang from your mouth? Have you ever tried to fit a boomerang in your mouth? That's actually a good start. I know it doesn't work. As I'm pretty sure it doesn't, I can't say I've tried myself, but boomerangs tend to be pretty big compared to the average person's mouth, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually work all that well. And now we need to go through the lava lake backwards, or lava river, lake, whatever. Lava body of... well, I can't really say it's a body of water, it's a body of lava. Whatever. Ah! <coughs> And that's what happens when you don't press the jump button when you're supposed to, as is the general rule of when you play platformers, how it works. Uh, anyway. Ow. Stupid. Stupid! Woo! Jump. Jump. Okay, let's see if we can... Yeah, there we go, not fail. Not failing is the best thing you can do. At least when compared against failing. 
Succeeding is even better than not failing, but, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. If you've succeeded, you've also not failed. But not failing doesn't necessarily mean you've succeeded. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's go talk to Jark. Let's give him back his gremlin stick. I mean, it feels weird carrying another guy's gremlin stick around with you. Might as well turn it back to its original owner, you know? See, oh, this is penis. Oh, that kind of ruined that joke, didn't it? But anyway. Oh, wait, no. That's right, we need to use. <laughs> Can't just talk to him, we have to use. Not that we actually select that we use a grandma stick, but whatever. Oh, no! <laughs> Alright, we have the candle of the bo poltergeist, which we must take to King Darkoan. So, I suppose we should... Go where that guy was blocking and go see the king in his palace. But first, we must learn the words of the resurrection spell. Yeah, the resurrection spell. Mikrasum. I don't think those were meant to be pronounced or said. Maybe that ghouls have very flexible tongues. Anyway, this has been another episode of Let's Play Gargoyle's Quest. Tune in next time. I think we go. We get to meet King Dracoin. Or maybe that's the video after. Either way, tune in next time, regardless of what we're going to do. Until then, later, folks.